to another ETS profile. My name is Christine Richards, and I'm the research director at Z Prime. And we're thrilled to have Shay with ComEd with you. us today. Thank Thanks, you so Christine. much for joining us. Thank you, Christine, for the invitation. So tell us a little bit about your role at ComEd and, and what you're working on there. Uh, I can say I have the coolest job on the planet. <laughs> Sounds like I'm it. the director of Smart Grid and Technology at ComEd, and my team's responsibility is to look ahead mm -hmm. and coming up with technology roadmap and how it looks like and how we can utilize those technologies for the benefit of our customers. We have made a smart grid investment because of Energy Infrastructure Modernization Act. And that has created two platforms, a physical platform mm -hmm. and a digital plat platform that has the capability to be utilized for other services and products such as smart cities. Mm -hmm. And what my team is doing is um, coming up with those applications and looking into different business models as well as um, the possibilities and exploring those for future. So now we, we've, we've heard conversations around platforms, you know, platforms of the future and really looking at what's next. I mean, how do you start to visualize that, that platform and really start to, um, you know, get, get some solid ideas and really make it, make it tangible for people? How do you approach that? That's, a, that's an excellent and timely question. So the way we've been approaching that comment was coming up with different possibilities, but knowing that those possibilities are not endless. Mm -hmm. And then for those applications, or um, looking into the digital and the infrastructure and requirements to enable that platform, uh, how it looks like in terms of measurement, how fast you need to get the data in, mm -hmm. Um, how accurate you need to have an understanding of, of visibility of your customer behavior. How can you map it to, to our investment strategy? So that's in terms of the, the, digital, uh, the uh, physical and the digital requirements and security uh, protocols to put in place to enable that platform. And what are the markets and how it looks like if you want to uh, enable that. And then the next step for that would be what are the uh, regulatory requirements need to be in place in order to enable that. So it's, it's a journey. We've started looking into this. And I'm sure you heard from Anne talking about the business models. Mm -hmm. So for us, it was the first step to think about how the business model of the future look like. And then when that's the place that my role comes in place, looking into the physical asset, the mm -hmm. physical infrastructure re requirement to make that platform happen. Did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah, no, that, that, makes, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, how do, I mean, comment, you've obviously made a, a, lot, a lot of progress around this and are really thinking about some, some great things. I mean, how do other utilities, you know, start to get, get started in that direction and really start thinking about some of these things? What are, what are some suggestions that you have? Um, so we've been talking with other utilities mm -hmm. and um, with PG&E, Southern California, Edison, and our two sister utilities. And mm, we see that there, there is a, you know, that that's our industry is going to, to, through that, that transformation path. A very good example of it um, is uh, we've been working on utilizing at our AMI mesh network. Mm -hmm. That's a mesh network that was created by um, smart meter deployment. Yeah. And, and the network during off-peak hours has the capability to transmit other data such as water meter. Mm -hmm. So who knew that water and electricity, I mean, they never go yeah. together. But yeah. the thought was uh, we were approached by two municipalities and water uh, utilities to, to, to explore the possibility mm -hmm. of um, making the, allowing the water meter data to hop on the electrical meter and, and through the AMI network and send the data back to SCADA system in municipality. And we have had conversations with other utilities and they, they're going through the same path. So pg and is the other one that they are um, in a, you know, in a, um, they're looking into doing a pilot similar to us. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's really interesting to hear around um, you know, those different partnerships and things that are coming about just by having some of these, some of these technologies available. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In terms of partnership, it's a different world compared to 15 years ago. Yeah. We totally understand and recognize that this is, we cannot make that happen in a vacuum on our own. And mm. um, the concept of public-private partnership is um, 
huge for us. So we try to explore different partnership, um, including like yourselves and ETS yeah. and uh, vendors and technologists and universities and national labs and create a, a team, efficient team that they can work through um, the, the problem with us. So mm -hmm. that's the thought. There are a couple of good examples. One of them is UI Labs. Mm -hmm. That's a yeah. university yeah. industry partnership within Chicago that they're exploring different projects within the city of Chicago. Um, Energy Foundry is another great example. We try to yeah. connect to entrepreneurs and mm -hmm. get their ideas and engage our subject matter experts and see how we can advance those. Yeah, so it's, I mean, really kind of building that innovation ecosystem. Ecosystem, exactly. Bringing all those teams together. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you so much time for taking the time to chat with us sure. today. We appreciate it. Sure, my pleasure. It. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>